Hello guys, welcome to Mac Out Smashers. So, also welcome to our exploration of data warehousing and data mining. The today's video topic, where the data transforms into the insights that drive the business decisions. In today's digital landscape, these technologies offer businesses a competitive edge by uncovering the valuable patterns and trends within the vast data sets. From structuring data warehouse to implementing advanced mining techniques, our journey will unravel the complexities and the opportunities of modern data analytics. So challenges such as data quality, privacy consideration will be addressed, highlighting the importance of ethical data practices, real world applications will illustrate the transformative impact of these technologies across diverse industries, from the finance to healthcare. Whether you are a novice or an expert, join us as we navigate the evolving of data management and analysis, unlocking the potential of information in today's data-driven world. So at first, the introduction. The data warehousing and data mining are the two key concepts in the field of data management and analytics. These are closely related but serve different purposes within the realm of organizing, analyzing and extracting the insights from the large volumes of data. So at first, data warehousing. Data warehousing is a process of collecting, storing and managing the large volumes of data from various sources in a centralized repository known as a data warehouse. The primary goal of data warehouse is to provide a unified view of an organization's data for analytical reporting and decision making purposes. So some key characteristics of data warehousing include the integration. Data warehousing involves integrating data from disparate sources such as transactional databases, operational systems, flat files, spreadsheets and external sources. This integration process ensures that data from different sources can be consolidated and analyzed together. Time variant. Data in a data warehouse is typically stored over time, allowing analysts to analyze the historical trends and patterns. This historical data can be valuable for understanding the past performance, identifying the trends and making the prediction for the future. Subject oriented. Data in a data warehouse is organized and stored based on the subject areas or business domains rather than the application oriented structures. This organization facilitates analytical reporting and allows users to focus on specific areas of interest within the organization. Non-volatile. Once data is stored in the data warehouse, it is considered non-volatile, meaning it is not updated or changed frequently like operational databases. This ensures the data consistency and stability for analytical purposes. So the data warehouse often involves the use of ETL process. So here the ETL, the ETL means extract, transform and load processes to extract the data from the source system, transform it into a consistent format and load it into the data warehouse. The ETL process also includes the data cleaning and data quality checks to ensure that the data in the data warehouse is accurate and reliable. So data warehouse typically employ the dimensional modeling techniques such as the star schemas and snowflake schemas to organize the data into structure that is optimized for analytical querying and reporting. So the overall data warehousing plays a crucial role in enabling the organizations to analyze large volumes of data gain insights and make informed decisions based on the data-driven evidence. It serves as a foundation for business intelligence, analytics and reporting initiatives within the modern organizations. So now it is time to discuss about the architecture of data warehouse. So data warehouse architecture is the structure and design of components that make up a data warehouse system. The architecture of data warehouse typically includes the several layers and components that work together to collect, store, process and analyze the data. So some overview and key components and layers of a typical data warehouse and architecture at first, the data sources. We already know that the data warehouse gather data from various sources including the operational databases, transactional systems, external, external data feeds and spreadsheets and flat files. These data sources contain the structured, semi-structured and unstructured data that is relevant to the organization's analytical and reporting needs. Second is ETL. So ETL, so extract. Extract means the data is extracted from the sources systems. 
using ETL tools and techniques. This process involves connecting to the source systems, selecting the relevant data and extracting it into the data warehouse environment. Transform Extracted data undergoes transform processes to clean, standardize and harmonize it for consistency and quality. Data transformation may involve data cleaning, the data normalization, data enrichment and data aggregation. Load Transform data is loaded into the data warehouse repository. These are different loading strategies such as full load, increment load, real time load depending on the frequency and volume of data updates. Okay. So number three layer is about the data warehouse repository. It includes the stagging area, data warehouse and metadata repository. Stagging area. The stagging area is an interim storage area where the extracted and transformed data is temporarily stored before loading it into the data warehouse. It facilitates the data validation, error handling and data auditing processes. And metadata repository, the metadata which includes data definition, data lineage, the data relationship and data transformation rules is stored in a metadata repository. Metadata provides the context and understanding of the data stored in the data warehouse. And also the number 4 layer, data access layer, query and reporting tools. At first, business intelligence tools and analytical applications are used to query, analyze and visualize the data stored in the data warehouse. These tools provide user-friendly interface for business users and analytics to create the ad hoc, ad hoc queries, generate reports, and create dashboards. OLAP Online Analytical Processing Servers OLAP servers enabling multidimensional analysis of data by providing the capabilities such as drill down, slice, and dice roll-up operations. OLAP servers support the complex analytical queries and enable interactive data exploration. Number 5. Data Presentation Layer Dashboard and Visualization Tools Data visualization tools and dashboards presents analytical insights and key performance indicator KPI in a visually appealing and intuitive manner. Dashboard provides a consolidated view of business metrics and trends to facilitate the decision making. Number 6. Security and Administration Layer Data Security and System Administration Data warehouse architecture includes the mechanism for enforcing data security and access control to protect the sensitive information and comply with regulatory requirements. So overall, the structure of a data warehouse is designed to support the collection, storage and analysis of data to enable organizations to derive the actionable insights and make informed decisions based on the data-driven evidence. So now it is time to discuss about the data mining introduction. So data mining is a process of discovering the patterns, the correlations, anomalies and insights from the huge data sets using the various techniques from statistics, machine learning and artificial intelligence. It involves the exploration and analysis of data to uncover the hidden patterns and relationships that can be used to make the predictions and drive in decision making. So some key aspects of data mining is about the at first the exploratory data analysis EDA part. The data mining often begins with exploratory data analysis where the analysis examines the structure, the distribution and relationships within the data set. This involves the visualizing the data, computing the summary, statistics and identifying the potential patterns or trends. Number 2. Data pre-processing. Before applying the data mining techniques, it is often necessary to pre-process the data to clean, transform and prepare it for analysis. Data pre-processing may involve the handling the missing values, removing the outliers, scaling and normalizing features and encoding categorical variables. In this video, we delve into the data mining techniques like classification, clustering, the association rule mining, regression analysis, anomaly detection, text mining, web mining, etc. So at first, the Classification So, the classification algorithm are used to predict the categorical levels or classes for new data instances based on the past observations. Examples of classification algorithm include the decision tree, the logistic regression, the support vector machine SVM and NAPBIS classifiers. Number 2. Clustering Clustering algorithms group the similar data points together based on the attributes or features. 
clustering helps to identify the natural grouping or cluster within the data. The popular clustering algorithm include the k-mean clustering, the hierarchical clustering, and DBS scan. Number three, association rule mining. The association rule mining is used to discover the interesting relationships or association between the variables in a large data set. It is commonly applied in the market basket analysis to identify the patterns of co-occurring items in transactional data. Number four, regression analysis. Regression analysis is used to predict a continuous variable based on the values of other variables. Linear regression, polynomial regression and multiple regression are common regression techniques used in data mining. Anomaly detection. Anomaly detection technique identify the unusual or abnormal patterns in data that deviate from the norm. Anomalies may indicate the potential fraud, errors or unusual behavior. Anomaly detection algorithms include the statistical method, the clustering based approaches and machine learning algorithms such as isolation forest and one class SVM. Text mining. The text mining techniques extracts the insights and patterns from the unstructured text data such as documents, emails, social media posts and web pages. Text mining involves the tasks such as text pre-processing, sentimental analysis, topic modeling and named entity recognition. Number four. Evaluation and Validation After applying the data mining techniques, it is essential to evaluate the performance and validity of the models or patterns discovered. Evaluation metrics vary depending on the specific task and techniques, but may include the accuracy, precision, recall, F1 score, and area under the ROC curve or AUC. Number 5. The Application Areas Okay, so data mining has application across the various domains include the business, finance, health care, marketing, telecommunication, and cyber security. So, the overall data mining enables the organizations to extract the valuable insights from data, uncover the hidden patterns and relationships, make the data-driven decisions to improve the business processes, enhance the customer experiences, and gain a competitive advantages in the marketplace. So now it is time to discuss about the applications of data warehousing and data mining. So at first, the retail and e-commerce. So market basket analysis and customer segmentation. Data mining techniques are used to segment the customers based on the purchasing behavior, demographics and preferences. Number two, healthcare, clinical decision support, or you can say the disease surveillance. Also the data warehousing and data mining concept are used. Banking and finance, credit risk assessment, the fraud detection. Number four, telecommunication, the churn prediction. Telecommunication companies use the data mining to predict the customer churn by analyzing the patterns, billing data, and customer interactions. This helps in implementing the retention strategies and improving the customer satisfaction. Network optimizations also. Manufacturing and supply chain. The marketing and advertising. The education systems. Students' performance analysis or the personalized learning techniques. So these are just a few examples of how data warehousing and data mining are applied in various industries to extract the insights, improve decision making and enhance the operational efficiency and drive business successes. As technology advances and data volume grow, the potential applications of these techniques continue to expand. Okay, so at last as our journey into the realms of data warehousing and data mining draws to a close, we reflect uh, on the transformative power of data in shaping our world. From the inception of structured repositories to the intricate algorithms of data mining, we have witnessed the evolution of information into the insights that drive the progress and innovation. But our exploration does not end here. Okay, so as you embark on your own data driven individuals, remember that the journey is as much about discovery as it is about embrace the challenges, celebrate the victories, and never cease to explore the boundless possibilities that the data has to offer and remind, remember if you found the valuable information from our video on exploration of data warehouse don't forget to like share and subscribe to our channel for more insightful content on the forefront of data analytics and technology by joining our community you will stay informed and empowered to navigate the ever evolving landscapes of data driven innovation your support fuels our passion for knowledge sharing and enables us to continue bringing you 
engaging the content that inspires and informs. Together, let's embark on a journey of discovery and growth as we unlock the potential of data. One insight at a frame. So thank you for being part of our journey. So like, share and subscribe and until next time stay curious and keep exploring.